I was always a big fan of vocal harmonies. A lot mm -hmm. of the groups I was in back in Australia had, you know, I was listening to Crosby, Stills, Nash, and the Eagles, and you know, that kind of music really inspired me. It was uh, it was beautiful vocal harmonies over the, you know, it was kind of rocking, a little bit country. It had a bit of everything, bit bit folk. So I started to branch out a little bit, and I remember hearing Steely Dan the first time. Going, wow, man, this is considered rock, really? You know, with all these. That's rock. Okay, well, then I'm digging rock, man. That's the <laughs> shit. That's the kind of rock I want to play, you know. <laughs> you know, what a crazy song that is, the Green Earrings. And I remember hearing that stuff going, now, you know, try out of a bass. You know, it was rich. It was so rich and full of harmony and my ear just was drawn to it because I wanted to know more about music and I, I would love the bands that did some hip stuff that was different, you know. Mm -hmm. I went into jazz a little bit, but not straight ahead. I kind of preferred the fusion thing. Mm -hmm. To me, I, I love the power of rock. <laughs> distorted guitar. Now, you know, this is not straight ahead jazz. You can't, you know, what's interesting to me is like a lot of my records have had some very mixed reviews, you know, especially by jazz critics. And <laughs> it, it blows my mind that if I was to play a John Coltrane solo, note for note, with this sound, mm -hmm. they would be running for the hills. They'd go, ah, sacrilege! <laughs> You know, but if it's played exactly the same as on a saxophone, oh, it's hip shit, it's, you know, it's called Dre, man. It's, it's the pinnacle, right? And to me, that's utterly, completely stupid. It's just the timber, the timbre, yeah. however you want to call it. It's the information that's important to me, not the sound of the instrument per se, you know, but a lot of jazz critics are... You know, they're purists, and, and for some reason, the electric guitar is one of those instruments that they're afraid of. It has to be like a jazz box, which I'm quite happy to play too. You know, and that's why I've always loved Chick Corea. Mm -hmm. There's very few of the great jazz legends that, are, that dig the electric guitar and its power and, and the way it can be used uh, in a jazz fusion context. So to me, I love fusion it was originally called jazz rock fusion because yeah. it had the jazz intellect but it had the rock power you know and mm -hmm. to me that's the best of both worlds and that's kind of the music i play so i wouldn't say i'm a jazz guitar player because i don't i don't play standards all that much you know i do i can play it and i've studied you've it. played some on records like uh, yeah. stella by starlight with sure. with, uh, you know, with alan and things like that it, i've done it you know, and I've, I've done it. It's not my forte, but I, I love to play changes. So whether it's on a clean guitar or on a distorted electric guitar, it's all the same to me. When you, when you started incorporating, though, these fusion ideas into blues, for example, when you were playing, how did you begin to incorporate that vocabulary? Well, you know... Uh, or, or would you just play over, over... No, no, I used it. I used my intellect a lot on the blues, you know. Like, for example, uh, I have a blues course called Spicing Up the Blues. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I do in that course is I like to uh, take it, you know, make it a little more modern in places. Like, there's this chord progression that everybody does. Right, one to four. And then the second time. That little half step move is often done with the chords. Yeah. But I like to do that with the linear thing too, so I'll go. idea and I'll go, ooh, I'll take it with a linear thing too. So I'll use my intellect to take take the scale. Which is the same as playing A alt and to yep. four chord. Yep. Or up a half step. You can see it as a half step Lydian dominant. People do it with chords and they don't get bent out of shape. No. They don't think about it. I do with the lines. You know, I often use jazz blues changes, which are slightly different. You know, the jazz blues changes are more like, instead of just the one, four, five, and then you'll have this up. 
up a half step, right? Maybe a diminished passing. Add a lot of chords and then maybe six chord altered and then the two. but it's still basically a 12 bar blues structure. If you were to demonstrate, if you're playing over those changes, those extra changes. Yes. One, two, three. without a backing or a band or you know but to be able to make the changes so that it's really important to improvise like that where you can make the, the make chords changes. you can hear the chords yeah, changing without, anyone without behind yes, you. just the linear thing yeah so that you know that's a much more challenging blues you know with those extra chords in there you know it gives you more places to go that's all but I'm just as happy playing a three chord blues too you know just one four five